everybody, welcome back to another episode of Hot News. We got a lot to go through today, so let's just jump into it. I think that's how the saying goes, and let's start off by talking about this behemoth, the RX 6900 XT. This is coming as a leak courtesy of Moore's Law is Dead. If you look down here in the bottom left corner, it says under NDA until 9 a.m. September 30th, 2020. So we are getting three months early information of this behemoth 80 compute units 22.73 teraflops 14 gigabytes of gdr6 a terabyte of memory bandwidth 2.2 gigahertz boost clock 2 gigahertz game clock 1.8 gigahertz base clock and a cool price tag of a thousand dollars and as you can see here it would be liquid cooled as well and not only do we get the image and the specs we also have the benchmarks you can see here they are comparing rdna2 with ray tracing turned on which is going to be called rxrt which is stands for radeon ray tracing obviously you can see that when you turn ray tracing on you only lose six percent eight percent five percent three percent it's basically nothing and then you want to see how it compares to the 2080 ti well amd apparently supplied those benchmarks too look at the slaughtering that happens compared to the 2080 ti dead is the 2080 Ti long live NVIDIA because it's, it's going to need it's going to need a nice little wake to celebrate its death. So while these specs look phenomenal, everything looks so good. The 6900 XT looks like it could stomp the floor with anything that you could put it on. That was a weird statement. Well. It's fake. It's it's just all fake. While it might be being reported by other YouTube channels or other entities as being the real card, there are so many giveaways that this is just a faker daker. Not the real card, not the real pricing, not the real anything about this. There are several giveaways. Number one, let's just take a freaking look at this card. Does this remind you of anything? I think Adore TV shows it best. It's just a conglomeration of a bunch of different Vega cards and Navi cards. You got the Vega 64 liquid cooled thrown in. You've got the Radeon 5700 non-XT version all in there. You can see that it's just, it's just an amalgamation of various different GPUs that have been thrown out there. But that's not the only giveaway that's fake. No. Second giveaway that's fake is, uh, we'll Wolfenstein Youngblood doesn't use regular DXR, it uses an NVIDIA brand of ray tracing, so how are they comparing a non-thing? I mean, I guess they could have a pre-release sample of a DXR version, but that seems a little suspicious, but then also on top of that, the games are spelled wrong on the benchmark. Red Dead Redemption, it's not on PC, Red Dead Redemption 2 is, and then there's no game called Witcher 3, there's The Witcher 3 or The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, you can bet your bottom dollar AMD's not going to mess up naming the actual games that they're going to have and then just take a look at the slides there's they're just you can see tons of anti-aliasing on the letters it's just it looks terrible it looks so fake this card looks like a card we expected amd to release two to three years ago not a card that we're expecting to come out next and then it's also been broken down and oh hey look the pcb is the exact same as the 5700 xt that sure is curious for a card that stomps the floor with it and would make it a shame to even show its face anywhere yeah that would be weird for something like that to happen there's nothing about this that seems remotely real the 6900 xt just being a, a bamboozle it's not it's not something that's real and then just lastly just lastly, uh, the Radeon branding is completely off. As you can see here, the Radeon here on the right-hand side is with the new Radeon branding that has the Ryzen font, but the card itself is the freaking Vega font. This is, it's, it's, this is the old way of displaying Radeon. So, man, there's too many inconsistencies for this to be real. It's also three months ahead of time for them to have benchmarks this early and have the marketing presentation for something that's three months early doesn't seem very likely. Uh, so if you're seeing rumors out there of an RX 6900 XT, I would I would hold your horses on that. Probably not real, definitely not real. Maybe we be, will get something called the 6900 XT and maybe it will hit these specs because I would love a card that does this. I would love a card that just slaps the floor with nvidia i want that from amd i want good competition in the high-end gpu market this is not it i I'm, I'm gonna i'm just gonna put a little 
pin in that one, say we'll revisit that September 30th, see if that actually comes out. But what will be coming out, according to Mark Papermester, the CTO of AMD, is that they are working on the cDNA-based Radeon Instinct MI100, and it's going to be coming this year. So you can uh, expect that there are going to be new high-end compute cards from AMD. This could potentially be the Arcturus GPU lineup that we're expecting out of AMD. But Mark Papermaster con confirming that cDNA is indeed still coming this year. And you may have been hearing about rumors of Zen 3's demise that it's going to be delayed. We've talked about that on several episodes here of Hot News because it just keeps cropping up. First, it was it's going to be delayed because of of coronavirus then it was going to be delayed because they're switching to five nanometers then it was good they're going to be delayed because the 3000 series is too successful well amd came out very explicitly again yesterday and said it's not going to be delayed zen 3 still coming out this year and not only confirming that it's coming out this year but it's still going to be on seven nanometers amd continuing to reaffirm what everybody else doesn't want to happen I guess maybe it makes good headlines that AMD misses their launch of Zen 3 for some reason. It doesn't make any sense from them to miss it when they keep explicitly saying that they're not going to. I don't know how long we can continue to cover these things on so many different news publications saying AMD is going to miss the ship. No, AMD is totally on track. There is no good reason for them to miss it. If they were going to miss it because of supply chain issues, they would have already announced that they would be well ahead on all that stuff. They would know what's going on. And you would also expect that uh, some people in the gaming industry would know what's going on with the pricing with regards to the PlayStation 5. Well, according to a former Xbox executive, specifically Albert Pinello, he says that there is no way the PlayStation 5 will cost over $500, explicitly saying in a tweet that he believes in never saying never, but he's got to say never on it costing over $500. I think that's quite ambitious considering how much technology Sony is actually packing in the PS5. I could see the digital edition selling for $499. I don't expect the disc edition to sell for less than that, but I'm no former executive at Xbox who also worked with EA and Sega. I'm just not that deep in the industry. So what is my ramblings on the internet mean for anything. It just means that I want Horizon Forbidden West, which in case you couldn't tell by it not having a release date when they showed it off on the PlayStation 5 launch, yeah, that means it's not a release title. It's going to be coming out in 2021. That's coming as confirmation from Guerrilla Games in this three-minute preview that they kind of gave for Horizon Forbidden West, talking more about what's going on, their approach to the design of the game, and everything about it. Basically, you span from Utah to the Pacific Ocean, and it looks... Chef's kiss, that's what it looks. And the new Project Z graphics from Intel are looking chef's kiss as well because it turns out the Project Z laptop, a prototype Tiger Lake system was brought home by Ryan Shrout and he showed that it can run Battlefield 5 pretty decently. You can see it's playing here at over 30 FPS on an integrated GPU. And as we've seen from benchmarks from Tiger Lake Systems compared to the new 4000U uh, series from AMD, Tiger Lake does seem to beat it. And the 4000U series is super impressive as it is. So yes, very excited for Tiger Lake. It does look like Project Z graphics, even in the low end, are gonna be something worth talking about. And this is worth talking about for me because I care about Kingdom Hearts. Maybe none of you do, in which case, you know, timestamps in the description, skip to something you do care about. Kingdom Hearts announces Melody of Memory as well as a new trailer for what potentially could be a DLC. They launched a YouTube video. You can see that it's a rhythm game that's gonna be coming out and then also offered some more previews of uh, what could be the next DLC for Kingdom Hearts three so in case you're a kingdom hearts fan like i am you could be expecting that or if you're a pokemon fan you could be expecting a new pokemon snap game coming to the nintendo switch pokemon tweeting this out that there is indeed going to be a new snap game on the switch and as reese said wow why does this look better than pokemon sword and shield what the heck let me know if you're excited for pokemon snap now below in the comments and let me also know if you're excited for the rog phone 3 because it does appear like specs are getting submitted to the tena filings so we found out a little bit about it 6.6 inch 120 hertz AMOLED 2340 by 1080 screen with an under display fingerprint sensor Snapdragon 865 overclocked 8 to 16 gigabytes of RAM depending on how much you want 128 to 512 gigs of storage two USB type C ports no three and a half millimeter drive dual front facing speakers a 5800 milliamp hour battery this thing looks like a beast might be good 
might be like worth checking out. The ROG phones have been surprisingly good gaming phones. I'm actually happy about Asus releasing those. And some of you might be happy that HTC is back. They've announced their new smartphones, starting off with the HTC U20 and Desire 20 Pro. The U25 G is gonna be the company's first 5G smartphone at around $640 with the Snapdragon 765G. You can read the specs that are currently on the screen. It does seem like a pretty decent deal for $640. Is it enough to get HTC as a heavy hitter in the industry? again probably not this is not going to be a m8 by any means htc really has fallen from grace and microsoft has fallen from grace in my heart because there's new microsoft fall 2020 windows 10 update that's going to make edge browser the default option again and i have to tell you i wanted to kill my pc this morning when i turned it on because edge popped up it was in my taskbar again it was the default browser again if my screen just was like hey do you want to use microsoft edge no you install chrome and that's all you do obviously we're going to have a lot of comments down below talking about how you use opera or how you use firefox or how i should be using other browsers i have enough ram so i'm going to continue to use chrome and the day that it runs out of ram i'll just buy more or download more whichever way i could pirate ram i could totally do that and if i could pirate this thing by Corsair, I wouldn't because I want to pay them for it. It's the IQ LT100 lighting tower and headset stand. This seems to be a continuation of their previous RGB headset stand, except for it's more vertical and has more lighting and it's probably going to be really expensive and it looks like it's going to be a waste of money, but I want one on my desk. And on Twitter, you could have just heard that noise that I was making. I could post that in a tweet now because Twitter is now beta testing voice messages on Twitter for certain iOS users. You can see here that it appears that way. You record it as a voice note, I guess. I don't like it. I don't like to turn audio on on videos on Twitter. I actually like a completely silent Twitter experience. They're saying that this would give a more human touch to tweets and allow you to clarify meaning or intent behind tweets and you could put it with text tweets. You don't just have to do an audio only. I'm hard passing on this and I will hard pass on anybody that tweets out an audio only clip. I'm not gonna listen to it unless it's like super viral and I have to look at it. Anyways, this is gonna go super viral. Deep face drawing AI can take simple pictures. Somebody sketches something, turns it into a real person. You can see some examples down here. They released a video of everything working on this and they were expecting to demo this at SIGGRAPH 2020 to give more indication of that. If you go to their website right now, they don't have the code out, but they do have the paper and the video of it working. Deep face drawing, deep generation of face images from sketches, scary stuff. Scary stuff. You can make real people from just doodles, doodle bobs. And apparently you can turn a real company in from terrible ideas. Quibi is obviously a good example of that. And they are pivoting very hard because they suck terribly at doing what they do. And every time I rant about Quibi, there's so many people who are just like, what's Quibi? What are you talking about? If you don't know, it's so much better for you, okay? Live in a world without Quibi. Close out this episode of Hot News. I'm done talking about everything that's not Quibi today, so see you later. But Quibi realized, hey, mobile only, and our selling feature being some stupid turnstile technology that nobody wants to use, nobody even cares about, nobody has a good idea that as to why this needs to even be implemented and is completely a gimmick and never should have existed in the first place. Kind of like that haircut you sported in high school. Well, Quibi now adding smart TV apps like Roku and Fire TV because they realize people want to watch feature length movies even if they're caught up into 10 minutes on TVs. You morons. That's what you get when you have a couple of disillusioned, disembodied billionaires trying to make an app for the everyman saying, oh, hey, wouldn't it be great if we got all of our Hollywood pals and we made it so that they could only watch Hollywood movies in 10 minutes? The people would love that. I love waiting the next day to see the next 10 minutes of Endgame. If if uh, if Avengers had been on Quibi, we would have been the hit of the century, folks. Screw you guys. And apparently that's what they're saying internally. There's a Wall Street Journal report that came out, which is currently behind an ad blocker, but thankfully I had my free uh, access to it. So I read it anyways. Jeffrey Katzenberg and Meg Whitman struggle with their startup and each other. Basically, there was not, there's no amicableness going on behind the scenes. Meg Whitman thinks Jeffrey Katzenberg is way too controlling. Meg Whitman, obviously not a very good CEO, led to eBay's terrible decisions, led to HP's terrible decisions, led to a failed gubernatorial campaign. She just can't really run things very well, and Quibi's the latest example of that. Anyways, she doesn't like him, he doesn't like her, and guess what? They have a fifth of the amount of signups that they were hoping for at this time, and they also 
fired their head of marketing the day after they launched because of course they did. No amount of marketing is gonna save your garbage app. Whoever was the head of marketing and had to get fired for this or left the company did so because she took a job at a company that was doomed to fail. She was going down with the Titanic. She just couldn't see it herself. It's not necessarily her fault that she was basically trying to sell peanut butter to people who have peanut allergies. It was just never gonna work out. So that's gone. And then also apparently all of these companies that they had major contracts with who were supposed to also co-promote Quibi have now started to renegotiate their contracts because they realize, oh, hey, wait, why would we want to partner? You suck. You have no install base. What is going on? They've basically fallen off the radar as far as anybody actually using them. So the companies that they actually did partner with are now trying to get their money back because they've been such an abysmal failure of a launch. And I have been calling this since before Quibi even came out. I saw this coming and I will be the first to ring the bell on the announcement of their death. I will call it like a doctor when the app finally codes. I will be so excited. Quibi will go down in history as my favorite thing to have ever failed. So that's it. That's the, that's the end of hot news. Quibi, just a giant train wreck. And honestly, honestly, Jeffrey Katzenberg, Meg Whitman, what the hell were you thinking? App never needed to exist. Don't forget to check out a video by some more news where they go way more in detail on the shadier side of Quibi that I haven't even touched. So go enjoy that. It's a it's a nice little breakdown. And I'm going to break down crying in the room because, you know, I I probably shouldn't have spent so much money on Quibi stock. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.